Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay, right, everybody see my screen? All right, can everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay, awesome. The web dev midterm review? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, welcome. Yeah, uh, so the intention of, of today's uh, lecture is, was uh, mostly going over some of the material that we've uh, seen uh, all throughout the uh, semester and preparing for the midterm exam later this week. Um, I, I did prepare a um, midterm review uh, although it has more than what's actually going to be there, I just wanted to go over this um, and and tell you, you know, that there are a couple things that are not going to be on the exam, or, or which ones will definitely be on in the exam. Uh, participant enable. Okay. Uh, so so yeah uh, so yeah we're gonna have the exam later this uh, week on, on Thursday. Uh, it's uh it's gonna be the the whole uh, lecture, so it's gonna be an hour and a half. Although uh, my expectation is that you'll be done before then, and uh, it's gonna cover all the material that uh, uh, all the way up to what we're gonna see today. Um, I'm just gonna cover one topic and one small topic is. Uh, that uh, is going to be in this Thursday, but you know, it's, it's fairly simple, uh, but I just wanted to make sure that I did cover it. Um, right now I have up to uh, 15 questions, uh, which is uh, about, you know, you should take about an hour to complete that, uh, that those 15 questions. I imagine uh, there'll be another five questions, maybe an additional five questions, maybe up to 20 questions. Uh, and you know, very much like the quiz, you know, a lot of, uh, fill in the blanks, a lot of uh, uh, multiple choice, and you'll get an immediate uh, an immediate um, grade on that. Let's see, if we want to take the exam on Friday, do we need to send you an email? Yeah, please uh, let me know if you are planning on having the exam, exam on Friday. Um, you know, I know there was a, a couple of students that uh, were having lectures on Thursdays and and can't make that that Thursday. There was a small group of folks that could not. But uh, if you, you know, if you were in the original group that uh, definitely can make it on Thursday, please uh, stick to the Thursday date. And I do have another exam going on 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 Friday at 1:35. And so what I'll do is that um, I'll 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 send on Piazza the the uh, the link to the join for uh, that other exam. Uh, so that uh, this small group of uh, uh, of web dev students can join that Friday, uh, and so if you if you want to ask me questions, if you uh, if you want an explanation of a particular question, I'll be there to answer those questions. Same same thing, right? It's going to be an hour and a half. Uh, well, a hundred minute, minute minutes, I think it is, right? It's a hundred minutes, uh, so it's a slightly over an hour and a half, uh, and so. 
the the exams are randomly generated, uh, so so everybody's going to get a different set of questions. Um, so again, that's to minimize the the opportunities for folks to collaborate. Uh, and so so anyway, so yeah, uh, on Friday, uh, just let me know. Just post it on Piazza. Send it to the uh, instructors so that uh, we can we can prepare for that and know how many how many folks to expect. Uh, yeah, so so as I mentioned, the, the material is up to what we are going to be covering today. I did want to cover one topic before we go. I want to make sure that I do cover that before we go. Let me uh, bring up the uh, IntelliJ here. Uh, let me close this. And let's see, web dev. It's probably this one. Let me see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me start this, and let me just uh, show you. Are right, quiz three answers posted yet? Um, I thought they were. Let me make. Let me see. If not, let me open that up right, right away. Uh, let's do this. see. Like, apparently not. OK, now they are. Quiz three. And what about? OK, we haven't done the React quiz just yet, right? Uh, all right, so uh, let me. Um, all right, can everybody see my my uh, my IDE? All right, so we have the explore screen. Right, and so say say uh, let me just show you. I'm going to create a component uh, and um, new JavaScript. Right, I'll call it um, the add component. Right, add. Uh, and the add component, as you would expect, right? Uh, say uh, we'll, we'll import React, and and so say it's a component that you want to be able to add to numbers, right? And you would say maybe you know const const uh, add, and and it would be just a function where you can pass uh, parameters a and b, right? And yeah, uh, you. Um, you would implement as follows, right? Something like this. You would return, and you have div, right? You would uh, display maybe um, uh, you would display maybe uh, a the value a uh, plus the value b, right? And the result is a plus b. Okay, and you would export the fault add. Okay, um, all right. So let's let's uh, let me, uh, demonstrate this this real quick. And in index, let me uh, comment this out, and let's bring add. And add. Let's pass in a couple of values. Uh, A equal two, and B equal three. Okay, and a comma. And um, uh, I, we need to import this. Import. There it is. There it is. So two plus three is five. Everybody good? Let me make that a little bigger. Uh, maybe I'll say this is H1. There is two plus three is five. All right, so everybody understands that. Yes? OK. I want to show you a, an alternative way of implementing that. And so I'm going to create um, uh, I add. I'm going to create subtract. And so I'm going to create subtract. So here's subtract. OK. So the, um, we're, going to, we're going to bring in React, just the same. But this time around, instead of a function, there's an alternative syntax of creating these, these uh, components, right? 
Uh, and it's uh, instead of using functions, we can use classes instead, right? So we can say class, right? Uh, subtract, right? And it extends, it extends a uh, a class that has already been defined, right? Which is React component. Okay. It, I don't really care whether you remember to extend components or not, right? I just want to show you how to implement the same equivalent class, right? And and so so the the way you would uh, implement this is that you would uh, uh, this is this is a um, a class now, right? And like a class, is a, a class can have functions or methods inside, right? And uh, and you export it the same way, so export default subtract so it's the same way that you would do a function same way but instead of just returning right like a function you implement a function called render right and in render you return whatever you want to render okay so it would be uh, h1 okay and here is where you would display the results okay um so so a, a couple of differences though a couple of differences a, because you're in a class right nobody's passing you anything right no no it's in, in a function it's clear right that you are being passed parameters whereas here there's no way that you're being passed those values instead what happens is that you know, if I bring subtract, right, and I say, say I, I just say subtract here, okay, subtract like that. All right, let me let me bring in subtract here instead of add. I'm gonna say subtract. All right, and this is gonna say, you know, refresh. It just says subtract. So whatever you return in subtract, whatever you re you return in the render function, right, is what gets rendered, just like in a function. Okay, uh, so the 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 only real big difference, right, is that instead of a function, this is a class that extends a, some super class, right, and instead of directly immediately returning, you implement the function render, right. So so this you know you know and and you use it the same way you would use a function, right. You you import it same way. Right, you use it as a tag, just the same way you would use a uh, component using functions. Okay, same way. Right, and you just return whatever you want to return in there. Okay, the other big difference is that is that unlike unlike add, that you pass a parameter, and it's available through the arguments, the parameter like this. Right, instead, instead they are available. You know, because it's a class, right? Uh, you get instantiated, and you get access to the keyword this, this. Okay, so these properties or these attributes, right? These attributes that are being passed are passed to you as a part of the instance object, right? In a variable called props as properties, properties, right? So let me show you. You can say you can say instead of A, you don't have access to A, right? Instead, you have this dot props dot A. Okay. Uh, minus this dot props dot B right, is equal to this dot props dot A minus this dot props dot B. So there it is, right? Two minus three is minus one, right? Or uh, you can say, you know, you know uh, seven minus three, right, is four. Okay. So so this is just an alternative syntax, right? This is the it's called the class components, right? Components that can be implemented as classes or components can be implemented as functions. Uh, early on. Early on uh, in the life of React, uh, most, most, yeah, yes, properties passed from parent, yes. 
uh, in the in the uh, early days of React JS, uh, the typically the way we would implement components is using classes. Okay, slowly, you know, we have been moving away from classes, right, and instead using functional components, right? Functional components uh, are slightly easier to write. Okay, they have a simpler syntax and um, and don't have some of the flaws of using uh, classes. One of, one of the one of the things that uh, that you could do in classes that you could not do in functions is maintain state, right? Like for instance, a, in a class you can you're being instantiated uh, and you can maintain variables declared in the class. And and you know as you as you modify the state, right? Maybe maybe it was like an account, right? And the balance would go up and down depending on withdrawing and depositing, right? Or it could be a counter, a counter, you know, it could go up, up, you know, plus one, plus one, plus one, or minus one to decrease, right? So it has a it can have an internal state, and, and uh, whereas a function could not, functions could not maintain any state. The, the value of any, anything inside of a function was entirely defined by its properties, okay? So, so at first, um, you know, if you wanted to maintain state, you had to use a class, right? And, um, and if, you, if you didn't need to maintain state, you would use a function, right? And, uh, you know, as, as uh, you know, over time, uh, we, you know, the community started uh, getting away from classes uh, and more into becoming using functions exclusively, right? And and only use classes for when we need we needed to maintain state, right? And classes would maintain state, and yeah, they would share that state with other components down the down the the tree, you know, with functional components that didn't need any state, right? The class would provide the state to this the function component. Um, today we, we can use, uh, as we'll see next week, uh, there are ways for function components to also maintain state just like classes. Uh, so, so basically, you know, the, the original reason why we would use sometimes classes, sometimes functions, you know, the, those reasons have gone away. Now, now you can get away with always using functions. Um, one good thing about using functions, you know, you would say, well, if I need state, I would use a, a class, but actually that's a good thing and a bad thing, right? Because, you know, um, things that maintain state are much harder to test, right? It's very easy to test a function, you know, because, uh, you know, for you know, a, a function, the definition of a function uh, is that if you pass it the same arguments, it'll always come back with the same results, right? If you if you say, you know, two plus two is always going to be four, right? So for the, for the same for the same parameters, a function will always come back with the same value, right? If you you know you know if you look at uh, any of the you know arithmetic uh, functions, any of the logarithmic function, uh, any of the trigonometric functions, right? Their definition is that if you give the you know sine the, the the cosine of ninety will always be zero, right? And the cosine of 180 will always be minus one, right? Uh, so, so this fact that functions always came back with the same value for the same set of arguments made it very, very easy to create test, tests, right? Uh, and you, know, you, could, you, you could always test a component if it was function because you could, it's very easy to come up with a very well-defined set of edge cases, right, to test whether your uh, algorithm and your component was working correctly, uh, as opposed to if you had uh, components that were stateful, um, it, the, the, it was much more challenging to test these, uh, these components because, you know, if it changes over time, then you can get into a different, into a weird state that you need to do edge case analysis, right, on whether the state was valid or not, right, so testing stateful components is much harder than stateless components, yes? Uh, so, so anyway, so the community has more and more moved towards uh, function component, right? Components that exclusively use functions and 
and we're slowly kind of, I mean, not abandoning classes, right? They're still widely used, uh, but, you know, we use them, you know, in much more reduced uh, sense, okay? But anyway, I did want to uh, describe you this syntax because the, the exam does have a couple of questions using this syntax instead of this syntax, right? And so I just want to, uh, you know, just just present that uh, the slides the slides do cover both syntax right functions and and uh, classes uh, so you you have you'll have note if you've, if you've gone through the slides you you'll have noticed that I sometimes use the function syntax sometimes I use the class syntax uh, but all throughout you know, we've been focusing mostly on functions uh, all throughout the semester but nevertheless you should be familiar with the class syntax nevertheless. OK, anyway, uh, that, this is the extent of, uh, of the differences. There are many other differences, how to maintain state. None of that is going to go in the, in the exam. Uh, state handling, all that. We're going to look at that a little later. Uh, uh, but that's not going to be in the, in the exam, you know, just, just as, as far as this goes. OK, um, all right. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, get back to. Um, Uh, where are we? Okay, the midterm, the web dev midterm review. All right, any any questions before we, we continue? Um, all right, yeah. So let's uh, let's get started. So uh, so definitely lots of questions on HTML, um, on different on different uh, type of elements, right? Uh, I usually have a question on on tables, you know, whether they're prop, uh, whether they're, you know, when would you use a table and when would you not use a table? But in general, and obviously there's exceptions, but in general, uh, tables tables is uh, in general should be exclusively used for tabular data, right? Where uh, you know, you have um, uh, so let's see, where you do an insert of a table, right? And you have a, a heading, heading one, right? Heading two, and so on and so forth, right? And then you have um, a value, value one you know, value two and so on and so forth, right? So this is a, uh, and presumably this is a grid, right? One, one, uh, value one, two, and so on and so forth, right? It is value two, two, and this is uh, two, one, right? Uh, and presumably these are the, 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 in the same column, uh, these are the same data types. Right. So this is this is the proper use of tables. You would not instead use it for laying out content. Right. So so if I if I give you, you know, this is a proper. Um, a, an improper. Improper use uh, would be to use a table. Right, where you have a column one, column two, column three, right? And then you have a, you know, a content here, what an ipsum. Uh, so let me just grab some content here. So this is an improper use of the of a, a table, right? This is this is not these are not headings, right? These are not data that is the same data type and things like that. So this is not data; it's just content. Folks still do this, okay? Uh, uh, instead, you should use imp improper uh, use CSS instead, right? You would use CSS instead, you know, float things like that, right? Again, nevertheless, people do use it. Um, then, you know, there's so, there might be some question on 
on um uh so so for instance in uh in, in one of the best practices today is that is that you know more and more folks are using phones and are using um are using tablets are using smaller screens and uh we should always try to you know design our code in such a way that it it is it is usable uh just as much as you know for the wide screen for for smaller screens right it should be equally useful and we've seen that in in our assignments right we saw that uh the way we do that is by being responsive right that you know, when we have big screens uh, you know we show more content and as the screen gets smaller we hide certain content and focus on what's important right in our assignment uh, you know we um we do that Right by by being responsive, right? We we say, um, "Oops, what happened to my my content? <laughs> I broke it. I must have broken it." You know, as as it becomes smaller, right? We we hide content, right? And we only keep what's uh the, the important part, right? And we we hide some text, right? And we use only icons. Right, and we show more content as we go. And so, if you ex if you search if you use this on a phone, right, then then you you will have uh, you know the main content still visible, but everything else becomes smaller, and and what's important takes up the entire screen, right? And so so that that philosophy has to extend right to you know to any component that you use, in particular uh, the any clickable area, right? Uh, it doesn't mean that because you're making the screen smaller, then every everything should turn to be to become smaller, right? Actually, right, because it's a small screen, perhaps you you should, you might want to make things bigger, right? So, so a button that can be easily clicked with a mouse, right, on a small screen, perhaps you need to make those buttons smaller, uh, bigger, so that you can click with a uh, with your finger. And so, so I might ask you like a trick question, right? If, you know, if the screen is getting smaller and now, uh, you know, the screen real estate is getting, it's a premium real estate, right? Uh, maybe I might try to trick you into a question saying, uh, maybe we should make everything smaller so that, um, so that you can fit as much as you can. And that's not the case. No, we should not make it smaller and make it harder for somebody with a small screen to, you know, try and interact. Instead, uh, you might want to make the clickable areas as big as you can. So typically, buttons buttons will will take up the entire width of the screen, right? Or input fields will take up the entire width of the screen, right? In smaller screens, right? So that you can easily touch with your finger uh, and interact better, right? And when the screen is bigger, that you're going to be using a mouse. Then you can be more precise on where you want to click on. So, so um, yeah. So careful. There, there might be a question on that on uh, on proper, you know, uh, design of user interfaces. Uh, that uh, we we do want to cater for the audience that is you know the highest demographics that are using our applications, which is the you know small screens, phones, tablets, right? Less and less people are using, you know, full-blown browsers to uh, to visit our website. So, yeah, we have to do that, right? Um, there'll be quite a few questions on on understanding how radio buttons and check boxes how they work. Uh, in particular, making sure uh, that you know how to implement mutually exclusive radio buttons. So, remember, radio buttons are meant for you to choose one out of many options. Right, and um, and so so for instance, you might you might say, oh well, these two buttons, right, the yes and no, are mutually exclusive. Well, how do I know that if you click one, it'll it'll um it'll unclick the other, right? So for instance, um, uh, let me uh lecture. Let me create here maybe um midterm. Uh, so JavaScript and uh, radios. 
So we say you know, import React. Um, let's use classes. So, so we get a chance to practice it a little bit, right? So classes, uh, radios, um, extends, React component. And we're going to uh, oops, uh, render. And we have, uh, we're going to export this default uh, radios. So, so if you implement a couple of radios, uh, you know, I don't know, um, H2, marital status, and you would have uh, an input field here. Um, and you say, um, uh, you know, married, uh, and you have uh, yes and no. Uh, and this is a radio, right? And you have two yes or so mutually exclusive here. So yes, no. And let me uh, uh, let's see. Let me bring over the radio. So radio. So here's the radio. Notice if I click on it. Notice that they're both selected. See that? That makes no sense, <laughs> right? You can't be both married, yes and no, right? So we have to make them mutually exclusive. And the way they become mutually exclusive is that they would know about each other, right? The way they know about each other is through the name. If they have the same name, right, status or married, married, is it with an R, two R's, okay. If they have the same name, then they are mutually exclusive, right? So now they're mutually exclusive. See that? That's how they know about each other. Uh, if you create another radio button that has no name, maybe, right? So these are mutually exclusive, but this one is not mutually exclusive. It's not, it's not affecting the other two. See that? Okay. Um, right, because the, the way they're grouped is by their name, all right? Um, so, so say, say you want a, a marital status, you have a, I don't know, favorite color. Uh, you can, uh, you have a, a couple of the radio buttons. And so this is, this might be uh, yellow, blue, uh, and red, and notice if they have the same name, notice that they're all, right? They're all mutually exclusive, uh, but these are two different groups, right? This is one group and this is another group. So the way we create the two different groups is that then we can give a different name to the other group, right? So this is color. Oops. Ah. So now these are mutually exclusive amongst each other, but not mutually exclusive across the other the other one of these. Okay, makes sense. Um, something you will might want to expect is that uh, if um, you know, notice that uh, it's a bad practice, right? You know, going back to the questions of of improving user experience with bigger clickable areas. Here's a typical example, right? That here you're forcing me to, you know, to click on the radio button, right? And in, in a small screen, this could be challenging, right? Uh, so it'd be nice if you would allow me to click on the label as well, right? So that I don't have to go in and explicitly click on the radio button, right? So that's a best practice. Uh, and we saw that the way we achieve that is by uh, declaring IDs, right? And this would be uh, married, yes. Okay, and then, right, and then you can create a label from here, right? You can say label, label, and then you can say this is for married, yes. All right, so now if I refresh, now notice that not only can I click on the, on the radio buttons, right, but now if I click on the label, Notice that it also clicks uh, the radio button. So this is a best practice, right? To to uh, improve the experience is to increase the clickable area, right? So that's a notice that the no is still not clickable. Now you can do it two ways. Uh, one way to 
to do this is to use the for, or to use the for and, and relate this related to the ID. Another way of achieving the same thing is to wrap the whole thing in, in a label. So you can say label, label, that, okay? Uh, so this, this achieves the same, the same effect, right? So if I refresh, notice that if I hover over the note, see that this is changing, right? So I can, this works the same way. See that now I can click on the on the label instead of having to click on just the radio button. There's two ways of doing the same thing, uh, and there might be a question on the exam on how to how to achieve this behavior. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's see what else. Um, so the same thing that there are radio buttons, and you can create groups by using their names. Right, you can group them by name. You can do the same thing for checkboxes. Right, checkboxes can also be grouped uh, by using uh, the same name. Right, so, so for instance, remember, radio buttons are for mutually exclusive options. Right, where it's either one or the other, so it it, it unselects the other. Right, whereas checkboxes um, are meant for being able to select several options. Right. Um, so actually, you know, I should call this, uh, uh, yeah, I, I'll keep, I'll, I'll keep using the, this same. So this would be H1 radios. So let's do an H1 checkboxes, right? Where, you know, if I copy this here, uh, and I go back here, notice I have the radio buttons. And again, notice that the labels are not clickable, but right, they are they they are not mutually exclusive, right? If uh, if I click one, it does not unclick the other. Uh, I guess I could put a a br here. Break. There it is. Okay, so that's better. Okay. Uh, yeah. So not mutually exclusive, but notice that there are. Uh, there are two different groups, right? This is the genre and this is the color, right? And the way they, the way they know that they are, they are related to each other is because they have the same name, right? They have the same name. So here you're selecting several colors that are your favorite and then your favorite horror, but they, these are two different groups, even though, right? It, it looks like everything's clickable, right? They actually belong to two separate groups, okay? So anyway, that's how you would achieve that. Um, yeah, you should be you should be familiar with how to uh, what IDs mean, what values, placeholders, title, or tooltips for input fields, right? And so, if you have a, a um, input, you know, input uh, element attributes, so you should be familiar with all the all the attributes in the input, right? So there's ID, right? There's ID, there's name, right? There is the value, uh, there's the placeholder, um, anything? And there is the title. Uh, so this is some hint, another hint. All right, let me let me put this in separate lines like this. Okay. Um, and so so notice that there it is bar, right? So value gives it the initial value, right? IDs. Are useful so that you can you can be you can refer to that element with its ID. Names are useful for a, for associating that element with other elements of the same name, 
right? Value gives the initial value. Placeholder is the grayish hint that you get when there's no value, right? So if I remove this, right, if I remove the, oh, I can't change it. Uh, let me remove the bar, the value. Yeah, so it gives you kind of like a hint on what is it that you, you can type in there. Okay, notice it gives you a hint. And then there's a tool tip that kind of like hovers over giving you another hint, right? It's like for instance, if I move the mouse over it, notice that it, it pops up that little black label right there that says another hint. I don't know if you can see it. It says another hint, there it is, see that, right? Uh, so, so you can give hints to the person of what is it that you're gonna be typing, right? By giving them a placeholder and also giving a hint a, using the title. So the title is so for creating that little tooltip. The placeholder is that little you know, background value uh, text, right? That gives you an example of what it is that you're expecting and so on and so forth. Okay, so just be familiar with that. You know, you there'll be some questions on that. Uh, yeah, make sure that you you uh, you know the correct format for dates, right? When you have when you have dates, right? You know, dates. And so if I grab that, uh, notice that the value here is year 2020. There it is, 2020. The month is 02. There's the 02. And the day is the 24. All right. So if I click here, you'll notice that it is indeed February 2. Uh, let me make that a little smaller. Notice that it chooses a 24 as the default value and the year is 2020, okay? Uh, so yeah, so that's the default standard way of specifying dates. Uh, the actual rendering on the screen depends on the locale of where you are geographically in the world. Here in the US, the format is month first, day, second and then year later. Uh, if you are in Europe, uh, it'll probably be different, right? It'll be day, month, and then year, right? If you're you know, somewhere else and in other parts of the world, it'll be different. The format will be different, right? But nevertheless, the format for the value, it's always gonna be year, month, day. Just be careful and dashes, right? And it's two two digits for the day, two digits for the month, and four digits for the year, okay? All right, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, select value option, value, blah, 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 versus label. Uh, yeah, so on, on select, uh, so, so for select elements, right? Um, uh, just a couple of things here. The name, right? That's that's just uh, so that you can relate it to other things, right? Uh, the value. Um, so, so what the user sees for the, for this dropdown, right? What the user sees for the dropdown is here in the options, right? The options say what the user sees, and and you might you you might get. So th that's that's content that is consumed by the human being, right? By you know what they see on the screen, which is these these options right here. But the actual value that the element has is one of one of these, right? From these values that you select here, okay. Um, and notice that if I refresh, right, by default it takes the value. See that it highlights two. And that's because you can set a value on the select element, right? And it, and the one that matches of the option, that's the one that gets highlighted by default, okay? If I don't give it initial value, right? Notice that it just um, it just chooses the first one and, you, and then you can select whatever you want, okay? Uh, so, so yeah, so just, just understand, right? How, to, how that works. Um, also these values, these are, this is not what the user sees, right? What the user sees is this, the labels, right? These are kind of like the labels of what the user sees. All right, excuse me. But if you, if you submit this value and send it over to the server, 
uh, this is what the value that is submitted to the server. All right, oh, that's kind of hot in here. All right. Um, all right. So let's continue. Let's see. Uh, all right. So what else? Um, yeah. So lots of questions on CSS, obviously. Uh, several, you know, how to use float, float left, float right, right, to style things and put them in, in columns. Right. So um, float that you can you have a uh, divs here right uh column left so you have so you have a uh, three divs and this is column center and this is column right so by default they just render normally right it just uh just divs uh but you can you can override that and perhaps we can give it some style here. And this is, um, you know, background, uh, background color, and say this is uh, yellow. Uh, let me. And this is yellow. This is uh, blue, and this is red. Right, you get you get that, um, and uh, but right, we can make it a little smaller. You can say with, and you can say maybe uh, thirty percent. Let's give them all the same width. There they are, um, and then and then you can make them into columns, right? Uh, maybe give them some long, you know. Good content here. Uh, where do we put? Where do we put the? Uh, do we have Laura Epson somewhere? Let me copy that again. Uh, so say I have a uh, left, and then Laura Ipsum on each one of these. Like that. All right. So you have now on top of each other, uh, but you can change that with float. Right. You can say. Uh, you can say the width. I can also change. I can set the float. I can say float left, right? Uh, float left. Wait. Uh, let me let me set each one of these. Oops. And. Um, There we go. So so now I can convert the the layout right to be represented horizontally instead of vertically, which is the default, right? And so so this 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 allows me to create you know columns and things like that. Um, uh, also, this this syntax of using styles in in uh, React elements that's definitely going to be in the in the in the exam, right? So make sure you understand this syntax. Uh, Obviously, padding, right? Padding uh, ten pixels, right? Padding uh, margins, right? Right. So padding is the inner space, right? Is the inner space, and whereas margin is the space in between, right? And uh, and then you can have a you know, borders, right? You say borders, right? Where you could have um, uh, you know, solid, uh, the color uh, green, right? And and ten pixels, right? So so you can control all three, all at once or independently, right? So the inner space, the space between. Right and the border all around. Right, so you should feel comfortable with playing around with all those kinds of aspects of divs. Right, laying them out. Right, the and the, all the padding and positioning. Uh, plus, right, um, 
yeah, I guess this is not all fluff. <laughs> uh, so maybe I should, uh, let's see. Uh, where's the, where's the div? Oh, here, here's the div. Okay. Uh, so uh, also you should feel comfortable playing around with, um, with position, right? Where you can, um, Position, okay. Where the position, um, instead of float, right, so let's remove the float. The float. So you have those, those three and being able to move them around, right? Put them wherever you want, right? Where you can do uh, position and this would be uh, absolute. And so this this uh, absolute is uh, is is um, means that you are uh, changing the position of this element uh, based on the on your um, the relative position of the screen. Okay, so if you say you know top um, top uh, say fifty pixels. Right. Notice that. Um, right. So that, that's one thing. Right. When when you say absolute, when you say absolute, you are, and let's let's move this left. Uh, One hundred fifty pixels. Okay. When you when you say absolute, you are basically saying uh, that uh, the browser normally decides where things get rendered. Right. When you say absolute, position absolute, uh, you're saying, hey, browser. Now you're not going to be the one responsible for deciding where to draw this. Okay, what's what's the position of this? So I'm going to take over. I will give you the left, the top, the bottom, right? Uh, so so that's why you, you see that the the blue here, right? It's kind of rendering underneath uh, because this yellow element is no longer pushing down everything else. So it's not being used to calculate the position of anything else, right? It's as if it's not part of the flow of the, of the, right, of the regular content, right? Because now you are telling me where to put it. Okay, now you're responsible. What do you want to put it? So I, you know, I said, you know, uh, absolute, right? you know, fix with pixels from the top and 150 pixels from the left, right? Uh, so this one, there's this also obviously uh, position um, what was it uh, position uh, uh, relative, right? Position relative, where again, you can also do, let's, let's grab those two as well. So this, what this says is that, what this says is that wherever you were gonna be rendered, okay? From that position where you normally would be, right? If I say zero, zero and zero, that's where you normally be. Well, from that position, move yourself down 150 and over 100, 150, right? So, so notice that the bottom is still in the same position that it would fall because I have not removed it, okay? It still wants to be at the top, but relative to that, move yourself, right? So it does calculate where you would normally fall, right? Uh, so it is being used for calculating the other elements of the screen. That's why it pushes down the red one, okay? And, and notice that it's all relative. The whole thing is relative to the, uh, to the whole screen, right? So if the, whole, if the screen uh, moves, right, everything moves with it. Um, or unless you say a position fixed, right? And you say that, um, that you want it you know, out of, particular place, right? Uh, so notice that it doesn't move, right? It's it's stuck there. Notice that it's in the same position of where my absolute would be, which is right underneath, right? But when I start scrolling, everything scrolls except the the red one, right? Um, also understand that I could say left, or I could say right, you know, measure it from the right. So from the right, 150 pixels, right? Uh, or I can put it on the corner. I can put it on the corner Right with top zero and right zero, so it would be on the corner on the on the on the all the way on the right in the top zero, right? So this could be like a heads up, 
uh, or it could be, uh, you know, like a like a menu there. Uh, isn't it bad practice to do styling like this? And it is to become. And, um, yeah, no, yeah, you you would uh, definitely right if you're if you're using if you're using headings and things like that. You would either do it yourself like we're doing here, or you would use libraries like Bootstrap. Bootstrap has libraries for all this, right? Um, you know, positioning it at a specific place where where there might be like a that you click and it you know jumps you at the top. It says, uh, is it done and own independent? Yes, of course. The best practice is that you don't apply the styling right on the element. Yes, very good. Uh, it is best practice not to put style inside of the element, right? Instead, having a separate uh, CSS uh, CSS file, and you have the styling there, and you will have a, a question like that. You know, what is the best practice, right? I'm I'm just you know. Uh, 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 presenting what are all the all the styling CSS elements that uh, properties that we've been playing around throughout the semester. Right. Uh, can you show us to do that with React if possible? This is React. What do you mean? <laughs> can you show us how to do this with React? It is React. This is React. I don't know what you mean. As in, what is the syntax to import the file? Oh, sure. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So let's uh, in the midterm, I can create a a style sheet, and we'll call it midterm.css. Okay, and this definitely will be on the in the exam tomorrow. Very good. Uh, so let's uh, let's move all this into my midterm.css. Uh, so for instance, I might I might call this uh, this class, right? I would call it maybe uh, position, uh, we'll call it yellow maybe, okay? So position yellow, it's a class, which I can declare here. Okay, and then I can move all this, I can move all this, and now I can remove my style, and I'll move it here. Uh, oops, uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, obviously, um, we don't use this is this is a JSON object, which is what uh, the style attribute expects in React. In CSS, we don't have background color, right? We have to use the CSS attributes, right? Also, these should be semicolons here, right? Semicolons, semicolons everywhere. Okay, uh, and these attributes are actually dash color. Okay, position is correct, top is correct, left, padding, yep. Uh, let's see, um, what don't you like? Yeah, well, we don't, like, we don't need the, 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 yeah, we don't need the, um, the quotes. We need the quotes over there because these were JSON objects. There we go. Uh, now, if I go back and I refresh, uh, I still have to import it. Notice that it's we're not it, the the style is not being applied yet because we need to, we need to import this, right? So let's import, and so we can say import uh, midterm CSS, right? And now now it's being applied the yellow, right? And we can do the same thing for all these, right? So so this style we can just cut this out from here. Uh, and instead, declare a class name, and I'll call it um, you know, position blue. Right. So here, this would be position blue, position, position blue. Did I call it blue? Is it class name position blue? Yeah. Uh, so notice that my blue is no longer styled, right? But if I paste this. If I paste this here uh, and I remove the style, remove the style, uh, I um, I fix this uh, these comma, right? I guess I could I could do a replace, right? I can replace this, replace the commas with semicolons, replace all, and I'm going to remove all the single quotes. Uh, okay, they're all gone, and this is dash c. And notice that it's fixed it. Okay. 
That makes sense. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, so let's keep going. Uh, flow, blah, 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 box model. That's padding, borders, width, right, high, top. We just looked at that position, absolute, static, relatives. You should feel comfortable with those styles. Um, it's a bad practice to declare the style right on the element, right? Instead, uh, it's a little better if you declare the style element, but the best is to link it, right? Obviously, this would be in HTML. In HTML, you use link. In React, you can just import the CSS file, OK? Uh, since many pages can refer to the same style, right? It makes it much easier to uh, maintain, right? It's, it's a single point of maintenance. Um, yeah, uh, for Bootstrap, I'm not going to ask you to memorize you know, all those myriad uh, of classes, right? Uh, uh, you should you should mostly you know, but you are responsible for memorizing some of the more common uh, CSS properties like color, background color, margin, padding, right, uh, uh, border, right. All those all those you should feel comfortable with those common CSS properties. But I'm, but I'm not going to ask you some weird, obscure uh, properties. Uh, yeah, not no border radius, right? Where that makes things nice and border. No back, no uh, no shadows, right? And your border styles like like a sol like solid, dotted, dashed, none of that, uh, or fonts like font size uh, or font color, things like that. None of that. Um, yeah, so the priority of rules, yeah. So that definitely questions on that, uh, meaning that uh, if you have styles, so for instance, I have, I'm here, here it says position blue, and uh, which is painting this one, position blue, see that? Uh, which is making this blue, making that blue, see that? But if, right, if right on the element, right on the element, I use a style, right, and I override background color uh, green, Wait, notice that that overrides. It's overrides. So this 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 um uh, uh, configuring the background color is colliding with what this guy is saying because this one's saying blue and this one's saying green. Which one wins, right? So so it's important that you know that because this is the closest to the element, then that one wins. So anything closer to the element. Whatever's closer to the element wins, right? Um, let's remove that. Bring it back to blue. Okay. Um, also, the more specific your rule is, the more it will have a weight, right? So this is this is when you have rules that might be competing over the style of the same element. So for instance, this is blue, and if you have an ID, and the ID is you know, position blue ID, right? Uh, the IDs are more specific than classes, right? Because classes, you can have lots of elements that have use the same class, right? Say I use a class that is called, you know, blue background. I can apply that same style to many elements using the class, right? So classes are considered to be more generic you know, less specific than IDs. IDs you know, typically be, uh, re refer to one single element, right? So if you have a rule that says something for an ID selector and you have something that collides with the class, then the ID will take preference, right? So for instance, position blue wants this to be blue, uh, blue right? But if I declare an ID and say position, position, blue ID, and I say that the background color is green, notice that it overrides, right? So these two, these two rules are colliding. One says that it should be blue and the other one says that it should be green. So which one is it? Is it green or blue? Well, the more specific, right? The, the, uh, uh, the higher the, um, uh, the weight, on that and that rule, okay. 
So yeah, so so be familiar with that. We, we've talked about this in the slides, right? Uh, restful, no restful, no restful. Uh, we will start talking about restful when we come back from the from the uh, next week. We'll start talking about that. Uh, UML, we no UML, no JPA. Um, React, right? Make sure that you um, are familiar with the with the basics of React, right? That there is a div with an ID of root, right? And the way with jQuery, yes, yes, jQuery. Somewhere down there. Uh, so you should be familiar with this. What's what? What's going on here, right? That uh, we we in the index.js, in the root index.js, we are importing not only React, we are also importing React DOM, okay? Uh, and we are retrieving from the DOM, right, from index.html, from index.html in public, right, public index.html, we are declaring a single ID, right, div of, with that ID, we are getting a hold of it, we're getting a reference uh, to that DOM, Right? And we are injecting into that DOM. We are rendering the whole this whole thing into that DOM. Right? That's that's what you are seeing here. All this content is being injected into that div. Right? If you inspect, you'll notice that the top div is right. That oops, the top div is that root. Right? This guy, this guy right there. Right? We are notice that it's empty at first. Right? And but we are injecting and drawing into that div. Right? All this content. OK, and the way we do that is by using React DOM render. We grab it. You know, where do we want to draw? Right. And then it renders that content in there. OK, so just just be familiar with that mechanism. Right. Index.js, root, blah, blah, blah. Um, right. Function component is what we've been. Uh, yeah, function component versus uh, class components. Right. We just talked about that. Right. Function components is just a. Uh, const function parentheses right versus classes you know extends react react uh, component a uh, class components uh no state no 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 none, none of the states none of this no 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 none of that yeah uh the only thing that that you need to uh, use uh, know for this upcoming uh, exam work was the using the rent the render and the return. Okay, uh, definitely function components. That's what we've been doing uh, throughout uh, throughout the um, the last several uh, weeks. And we haven't talked about on click, so no, no on click, and no on change. Uh, we did talk about router, right? So we 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 saw examples on how to, um, you know, declare a router, uh, and within that router, right, declare paths that allowed us to, uh, to to navigate from one place to another, right? Using we we saw examples of using the link, right? Um, we didn't look at parameters just yet, so we'll look at parameters when we come back from the exam and reading properties, we haven't seen that yet, and no history, OK? Uh, so we'll take a, take a look at router. So mostly just router and being able to navigate, OK? Uh, ES6, you know, lots of ES6 questions, right? Of, um, a, of uh, you know, obviously exporting and being able to export uh, and be able to import Right, knows how to how we import. Um, also, we've been using this syntax of the, using the curly brackets to extract a particular uh, particular uh, variables or particular. Uh, so let me let me just show you that. Uh, so here in the midterm, so say you have um, here a, a JavaScript a library or or that says it's math, right? And in math, 
uh, you might declare certain uh, certain functions, right? So maybe you have a const add that returns that takes us arguments a and b, and this returns a plus b. And you might have const uh, subtract, right? That returns you know, say a b or it returns a minus b. Okay. Uh, so how would somebody use this in in here? How would I use that? So you could say import math, right? But here's math, and math is not exporting anything. Right? So for instance, I could do um, uh, export the fall add, right? So, so I can say import add from math. Uh, so let's look at here, uh, H1, you know, export, export, import. Uh, so you could, you could say, so, so H2, you could say, I want to render here, add two plus two. Right, there's four right there. Uh, <laughs> let me get rid of this, uh, this example down here. Uh, column, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I can say, I'm just going to say, def, you know, display, display none. I'm just going to, just going to turn it off. Display none. Okay, they're gone. All right. So, so yeah, this four is calling that, that there, right? calling that over here. But what about subtract? How do I, you know, how do I get a hold of, of everything else? How do I get a hold of it? So instead of doing that, right, uh, let me do multiply, mul multiply. So this is A times B. Uh, instead of, uh, so, so multiply at default allows you to, when you import, right, just, just a, uh, you know, the, the default thing that is being exported by math is, is this add, right? So you can import it right away. Uh, but say you want to export other things, right? Well, you can export individually, these individually. There it is, right? Now I can, I can uh, import individually, um, uh, multiply, right? And I can say multiply, multiply. Right, there it is, four. See that? Multiply two times three, say. Get a six, okay? Uh, so, and also, you know, uh, do subtract as well. I can grab subtract. Subtract uh, seven minus three, which is four, okay? Uh, notice that uh, I could have done the same thing with add, right? I could have done the same thing with add, you know, export uh, without the default here. Uh, now I need to include this uh, inside of the curly brackets, right? And I still get the the same the same result. Uh, but you know there might be there might be something that I always use uh, to um, to import, right? That I don't want to have to you know individually have to import each one individually. So so what I could do is create an object here. Uh, a very common name for this object would be some kind of API, right? Some some way that I could uh, I can collect all these functions so that you can use them all at once, right? And I can add here. So this is an object. Uh, it's a map of name value pairs, right? Subtract, subtract, and multiply. Okay. And then I can export this. I can say export that object, and this will be the default object that I'm exporting, the API. And, and then I can say, okay, well, I can export that. So this math now will be, uh, will be tied to whatever is being exported as a default. And you can only export one thing, 
uh, by default. There's only one default export. You can export a whole bunch of things, but only one of them can be defaulted, right? And uh, the API and some, and some, wait, what's the difference between an API and some JSON value? Oh, nothing. This is a JSON. This is a, exactly a JSON object with name value pairs, name value, name value. I can put other things in here, right? Pi, and this is a 3.1415. Right, so I can I can say you know, math dot pi. Right, there it is. Right, I can put anything in there. So it's a it's a little JSON object. Right, uh, now JSON or ES6 uh, has some really cute um, has, has some really cute uh, uh, shortcuts. Right. Uh, one of the shortcuts is that if the name of the property and the name of the variable and the value are the same, add, add, subtract, subtract, uh, you can leave out the value. And so this subtract is now understood as the properties called subtract and the value is also called subtract right? so that you can collapse it into one single thing. Right. So, so this would become something like that. So this has, that's an abbreviated way of capturing the, the same data, right? And notice that this works just the same, okay? Um, yeah, so, so this is very, very common. So now we no longer need to export ads. Track. Yeah, exactly, we, we, right? Instead of individual exports, right? Then we can just export just the one API, right? Uh, so yeah, so you don't, you don't need this anymore. Now, if I remove this, if I remove this, you have to be careful. Now these are not valid, right? You, you would have to put uh, math in front of it. Oops. Right, now this still works, okay? Um, so so uh, also on ES6, be careful. Notice this, uh, this syntax, right? This is an implied return. This is an implied return, meaning this is being the whatever this returns is whatever the single the single um, line of code right here is just this a plus b right and the alternative the alternative is to have uh, an actual return okay, an actual return and these are so this is an implicit return implicit return. So something that is written like this could be rewritten like that. Okay. Uh, but just, just be careful. Um, there will be questions on, on that syntax, um, which you've, you've used quite a bit in the assignment. So that shouldn't be an issue. And now be careful uh, if, um, uh, if you have this, right, you have a, if you have uh, other lines of code, like for instance, const c is like that, right? And then you have return c, right? So, so this cannot be converted into a uh, into a, an implicit return. This can be converted, right? This can be. This is the equivalent of writing it this way, right? But this, because you have additional lines of code. Right, you might have a for loop here. You might have a if statement. You might, you can have you know arithmetic operations. This cannot be converted into a an ex implicit return. Okay. Uh, so just be careful on that. Um, import something something something. Uh, import blah blah blah. A spreader. Oh yeah, spreader. Uh, I think we did cover spreader, but let me let me talk about spreader. And so uh, here, let me create a spreader here, spreader. Uh, import uh, react const spreader. OK, 
Okay. Uh, so, so Spreader is a um, is a an ES6 uh, functionality that allows you to easily copy things uh, as follows. Like if I have a uh, const you know, a and I have values several value three one two three right, uh, and I have b and which has maybe two three and four, I can copy the values of a right just by using this syntax. So that that says you know, at the end of B, copy the values of A all the way through, right? And so, for instance, I can say, I can you know, display the values of, of A. Uh, let's see, well, ah! And uh, say um, li A is equal to A. And then I can show you B is equal to B. All right, so let's uh, radius here. We'll do um, spreader, spreader. Uh, did I export it? Oh, I didn't export it. Export default spreader. OK. Import. There it is. So notice A is one, two, three, and B is the values that I had originally, two, three, four, plus I have the one, two, three at the end. See that? Um, I guess I can say join with a comma. Does that work? Oh yeah, comma, there it is. Yeah, see the commas there, perfect. Uh, yeah, so so spread allows you to do that. Uh, now it can put them anywhere you want, right? You can put them in the middle or here, right? So so notice that I'm copying a in between and then at the end. See that? So I can copy any which way I want. And it also works with um, it also works with objects, right? So for instance, if you have um, you know C. Right, and you have an object that uh, says, um, uh, you know, um, D uh, is one and E is two, right? And then you have const uh, D, right? That has um, F, which is three, and G is four, right? Let's print that. Oh, I, uh, let's see, let's take a look at C. Uh, I think this is gonna break. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't like to print JSON objects. Uh, you can convert this into a string uh, by using json.stringify. So convert uh, this, this expression C into a string. So there's C, so C has D, and E with the values one and two. Uh, and you can also display D, so D. So D has uh, F and G with values three and four, right? But now I can combine them. I can say, I can say const F, right? Is equal to copy over C and then copy over D. Right, and then I can print out F. So now F has the copy of C followed by the copy of D. See that, has, has now both of them, right? And you can play around the, this, right? Uh, um, and then add more things, right? I can, you can add um, K, right? K, one, two, three, and L. Two, three, four. Right, we have K and L. See that? Now you have to be careful because say you bring in C. Say you bring in C. So C has what? D and E. Well, what happens if F redeclares D? Right. So if I say here, D is equal to 
you know, three, three to one. Well, which one wins? Is it the D that I copied over, right? Or the one that I redefined, right? So notice what happens here is that D was, used to be one, but F redefined it to be three to one. See that? And so I am overwriting something that I have inherited from my parent and I'm, I'm overwriting it, right? So uh, now I get the new value of F in, in F, okay? Uh, so you no, know, you should expect you know a, a small little puzzle like this, uh, playing around with this. Okay. Uh, also, objects can can um, uh, objects can contain a, can contain other things. You know, we could create B. Uh, for instance, this B. What what is that? If I put a B in there, I'm creating a an element called B, whose value is this B, right? So notice that now B has that array in there. See that? Right, which is the same thing as saying this. So B has that value, right? But because I can, because of, I, you know, because the property and the value have the same symbol, right? It can collapse into a single one, right? Uh, if, um, so say, say I do that with A. So A has one, two, three. And um, B, I can have B down here. So nothing's changed. But B can contain, I can contain um, a, an object, F. All right, so you can put arrays in objects and objects inside of arrays, right? So the last element, of B is F, which is a, an object. So you have all these elements which are scalar values, but the last one is a compound value, right? It's a it's an object. So notice that uh, so see that object. It's uh it's just doing the array, and then the last one is an object which it doesn't know how to render. Uh, so I guess uh, B instead of doing this, we could do a JSON stringify, and that should render. Let's see how. How B renders, yeah. Now B renders as an array, and then the and then the objects. See that the object contains elements and arrays inside of that object. Right, pretty cool. All right. Anyway, uh, let's see what else. So spreader function map. Right, we played around with map all, quite a bit. Um, uh, properties. Yeah, I say. If, uh, hi, Professor. Just letting you know that I uh, I'm going to say I cannot see the Q3 answers. It would help to review if for midterm time. Q3, you cannot see. Oh, yes. Let me let me uh let me fix that. Q3 uh, for graduates. Whoa. Uh, quizzes. Quiz three. Edit. Okay, so now the graduates can also see Q3. Uh, arrow, no Redux, no Redux. We'll do, do Redux uh, later. Yes, jQuery, right? So everything we've done with jQuery, be able to append, right? Uh, empty, click, right? HTML. Everything we've, we've we've done. Make sure you know your abbreviations, right? Um, a single page, single page application, HTML, DOM, CSS. No JPA, no JPA because we haven't seen JPA. Uh, no SQL, we haven't seen SQL. But any any acronym you've seen so far, you know, it's fair game. Okay. Uh, what else? Um, I think that's it. All right, any questions? Uh, hi, Professor. Yes. Uh, uh, could you please repeat uh, what, uh, like, uh, how many questions we are expecting for uh, midterm? Uh, about 20 questions. OK, thanks. Uh, somebody said no SPA. No, yes, SPA. Uh, React is an SPA library. Yeah, definitely SPA. 
Uh, what did you say about Redux being on there? No, no Redux. No Redux. And uh, what's the difference between select value A and option value A? Sure. Uh, so here, and so we have a uh, check boxes. Okay. Uh, so so basically, uh, these are these are all the options, right? And you have all you know each one of the months. And so this, this tells you which of those three is the one that is selected, right? What is the initial value that which option is initially highlighted, right? These are all the, you know, it's as if you had, you know, 12 radio buttons and you can specify which of those 12 is initially selected. And the way you do that in select is that you list all the options, give them values, and then and then you can select which one is the selected one by selecting it here in the value. So these are all the possible values, but this is the value of the whole select. Okay. Uh, professor? Yes. Just a quick question. Um, could you go back to that example where we're overriding the D um, in like that odd JSON object in F? Yeah, this this stuff. Um, so here we're overriding D in um, twenty three. Does does this like override D in general, or does it just like just for in F? Like yeah, no, if only in F. Console dot log D outside this JSON object yeah. for F. Yeah, no, 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 no. E. Okay. Yeah, it's only only uh, you're overriding the value which which initially you had copied over, uh, and you had you know D is equal to one to one. But then you overrid it here to be three to one here. The this stays the same. C doesn't change. Okay, cool. That makes sense. Thanks. Uh, yeah. So so the uh, the map filter functions. Yeah, uh, you have to know all of them. Let's play around with it a little bit. Um, uh, JavaScript uh, map. Filter, find. So we have import, uh, React, and then we have um, const uh, map filter, find. Right. So so here. So return. No, not require. Uh, export default map filter find. And so here you might have uh, arrays. Right, so you might have um, uh, const, const, uh, numbers. Uh, you might have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Right, and uh, so you might have um, uh, the the um, you might have uh, squares. Right, squares is what it's a brand new array. Right, that is the is the result of having. Uh, multiply each each element by itself, right? And then you want to calculate all the values having applied to all of them, right? Uh, so exam only contains multiple choice for the Yes. Uh, so for instance, if you say, uh, if you say uh, numbers, right? Map, and here's uh, each one of the elements, right? The each item. And so this is a function. So map takes a function, map takes a function, uh, and that function is going to be applied to each element as it iterates over the original numbers, right? And the result of the, the result of the new array is gonna contain the results of those functions that you called on each one of the items. So this is the item uh, and it's gonna return, you know, item times item. Right, uh, we can display that. We can say in your know, return, and it's two uh, map filter find examples. So ul, and then you have li, and so we say uh, numbers. 
so this is um, you know json dot stringify uh, numbers. Okay, let's display now squares, and let's include that in here. So squares. Uh, not squares, but I called it, I called it that, yeah, that. Okay, uh, so so let's see what that renders. So there, see numbers are just one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the squares are one square, four, two squares, three squares, four squares, and so on and so forth, right? Okay, um, or, hi, what does the, what does the dot, dot, dot mean in the spreader? uh okay let me let me finish this first all right let me finish this uh so for instance if i want to do const and find the even numbers then that means that i i'm filtering meaning uh, of the original values i'm only going to keep a subset of the original values right so that's what filter does filter allows you to say okay i'm going to go over the numbers and i'm only going to keep a few of them only the ones only the ones that for which, you know, these are all take functions, right? Uh, so if this function that I give returns a true, I'm going to keep the value that I'm iterating over. So they all take the items, they all take the items. Okay. And, uh, and if this returns a true, I'm going to keep that, otherwise I, I won't, right? So, so th if this is even, I'm going to keep it if the modulus two is equal to zero, right? So, so. Uh, I'm going to say, um, you know, return, return, you know, item modulus two is equal to zero, right? So let's uh, display now the even. Okay, there it is. I'm only keeping two, four, six. See that? Uh, so, or obviously odd. It would be the same, but if it's not equal to zero, right? So this is uh, odd, right? Odd one three five, right? Um, also, make sure you 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 understand that this syntax uh, can be simplified, right? We can because we have only one parameter, uh, we can take out the parentheses. It's optional, right? Right. Also, uh, because there's only one thing that is being returned here, I can I can drop the curly brackets and the return altogether. See that? All right. So those are equivalent, uh, and I, I just get the same values. Uh, or I can do both. Right. I can re remove the remove the the parentheses and re remove the the return, so it becomes much easier to read. Right, without the return and the parentheses, blah, blah, blah. Right, so just, just be uh, careful with that syntax. Uh, Prof, can you please post the midterm files we worked on tonight so we can review? You mean these files? Sure, yes, I'll make them available. Um, there's also find, right? So there's find. So find, you know, like all these, right? They all all these functions, all these uh, take as argument a function. So say I want to find four. I want to find four. All right, I want to find four. I'm going to, I'm iterating over uh, the item. And, um, and so I find it uh, by, by returning true if the item is equal to four. If it's equal to four, then I then returns true. I found the item, which is equal to true. Right. So let's display four here. There's four. Right. Found four. Um, I can also find the index. Where did I find it? You know, four's index. So I said find index. Right. Uh, so where is four? is at position three. See that? Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, there was a spreader question. Uh, this is a spreader question. 
says, um, blah, 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 blah. what does dot, dot, dot mean in the dot, dot, dot A? Uh, I think you mean here, right? Uh, so again, what this means is that uh, I am going to dot, dot, dot means to, to copy. Right? I am going to copy and splice inside of this array or object. I'm going to splice the content of A, right? Uh, before I would have to say A sub zero, comma, A sub one, comma, A sub two, comma, A sub three, if I wanted to copy every element one at a time into another array. Instead, right, there's a the syntax that allows you to very quickly, you know, just, just, just spread the contents of one array over another array. Uh, there's a question, I have a question about the assignment, blah, 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 blah. Can I show you when you're done with it? Uh, yes, of course. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Yes, I will upload the video as when we finish this. Uh, uh, so yeah, Canvas takes a, I mean, Zoom takes a couple minutes, sometimes a little longer to process the video before making it available. When it's available, I will upload it. Uh, same thing with this, with all these examples. Um, all right, uh, let's see. Someone on Piazza had asked about this week's assignment deadline being potentially extended to next week. Uh, this week's assignment. Um, actually, that would be a good idea, right? Because that would give you a little more time to work on uh, and preparing for the exam. Yeah, let's do that. Let's uh, let's move the assignment uh, to the next next Sunday so that you'll get a chance to uh, practice for the for the exam. Yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, of the examples you showed with spreader, what kind of spreader puzzle should we expect? Yeah, something like this, right? Where um, I give you uh, an object, then uh, it's copied into another object, then it gets overwritten. And then at the end, I'll ask you, what's the resulting object? Yeah, something very much like this. So I, I would go you know, and just play around with this a little bit, right? On your own and see that you understand what, what the puzzle is. Uh, Hi, okay. Professor. I kind of have a question about. Um, yeah, so let's uh, let's go into office hours. If you have questions about assignments and things like that, uh, let me uh, allow folks to share their own screens. If you wanna, if you wanna share your screen. Um, no, it's more of a conceptual question and oh, okay. a little bit out of scope, but on the same topic. Yeah. Um, when you have things like dot map and all those ES6, ES6 functions, right? Mm -hmm. But you're sort of modifying things in an async await, await kind of situation, like you're calling from a database, right? Um, yeah. is, when you map in particular, you're always creating a new array, correct? Yes. But is, is, it, is it appropriate? within that situation to map and not make a new array, like just to replace a, a for loop with the map. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's way ahead of what we're gonna be talking about, but yes. Um, uh, so when you're doing this asynchronously, if you find yourself doing loops, then something's wrong. <laughs> uh, usually when you're doing async, async uh, communication, Usually you'll you'll be doing underneath you'll you'll be using um, promise the promises uh, API uh, and and what the calls of those functions uh, what what you'll be accumulating are not values you'll be accumulating uh, multiple uh, uh, multiple promises that all need to be synchronized and and so the usually the promise API has a a dot all uh, call that allows you to synchronize all those calls into one single, you know, join all those calls into one single wait. You're waiting for all those callbacks to come back, right? And then join them into a single result. Uh, but if you're doing that, then, then perhaps your design might not be the correct one. Usually you might wanna move that map to the, to the server side, do the server do all that and then, turn the, the results back to the client. 
but the client should not be doing multiple calls and then waiting and synchronizing all those things. But yeah, that's way ahead uh, when we no, when, um, when we talk about rest. Issue I came up at work and it yeah. had to do with like ESX and I got really confused. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, look up uh, dot all uh, for the Promise API and that should allow you to do synchronizations of of in for arrays or looping. But ideally, you would move that to the server, not you would do it in the client, unless you don't have access to the server and you can't change the server. Thank you. Sure. But yeah, we'll talk about that when we get to Node.js and we'll talk about asynchronous um, calls and things like that. Okay. Any more about the um, uh, assignment and I was trying to go through like the, um, I guess, how what you told us to do and like um so i just show my screen yeah it's just more on the fact that like maybe just i'm seeing way too many reds i'm not really sure and like um i can't really translate how you handle the um i guess this section here i can't really translate it to how like mine would be done just because this was just for like a check situation but like I'm not really sure how to translate that. I'm not really sure if that's the only error that's bringing that's like happening right now. Uh, let me, okay, so, uh, blah, 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 blah. okay, so, uh, okay, okay, let me see, return, blah, 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 list, you, know, you, know, you have the hyperlink, um, href, blah, 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 and then you have class name is equal to, um, yeah, so you see that uh, class name, Mm -hmm. uh, so that in li line 11, mm -hmm. all right, so that, that uh, quotations, okay, those should be back ticks. So change that. So select, select that all the way to the very end. Uh, wait a minute, wait, 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 right there. Yeah. Okay. So do back tick. Back tick. So yeah, that's uh right right next to the one on the left the left side of the. Oh, of the... Okay. gotcha. Um... Oh, it didn't update it. Okay. Oh no, you're doing you're using code. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Let me try it. Can I try it? Yeah, sure. Okay, sorry. Okay, so let's see. Oh, that's a... Okay, uh, then Liz, blah, 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 blah. Okay, you don't, so what are you doing here? You're saying blah, 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 blah. page, blah, 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 equal, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, okay, list, group item, blah, 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 page dot active. Okay, you have page dot active equal home, uh, return active. Okay, okay, so we have to do the same thing here. Okay, and where else? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, I think that was it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that was it. Yeah, thank you so much. Sure, and careful, right? Uh, we don't want these HREFs, right? Yeah, I haven't finished the whole thing yet, but yeah. Okay, and yeah, and these are all going to become links, right? Yeah. Okay, sure. Thank you so much. Sure. And Professor, can I ask a quick question about the project? Project, okay. What's up? Uh, can we use Figma in our planning purposes, or is that too? Oh no, that'd be awesome. Yeah, if you're if you're familiar with Figma, that's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, professor, another uh, question about the project. So the project requirement page states that we use remote APIs. Uh, could you el elaborate on what? It means and maybe exactly. yeah. So um, when I, I will demonstrate how to do that, um, but um, DB API, I think. is that it? yeah? Uh, so this is I'm going to demonstrate with uh, this open source. Uh, well, actually, that's open source. I paid for it. It's an API that's available online uh, that you can query. Um, 
Do I have? Oh no, did I throw that away? Oh no. When did we? Ah. <laughs> I think I threw it away. <laughs> um, it's supposed to be one of the world's best insulators. Um, so, so uh, what I was saying is that uh, if you if you look up these APIs uh, and what, one place that you can find lots of APIs are in programmable web. I believe I say that in the in the document, programmable web. And, and the wait, what? Did I spell it? Capture programmable web. What the heck? Programmable web APIs mashup. Okay. Uh, so, so here you can, you know, about anything you want, like weather uh, or stocks uh, or movies or anything like that. And, um, and you're looking for uh, APIs that have, there are restful APIs that, um, you know, you have uh, the weather channel is here. Uh, you have marine worldwide uh, skiing weather, uh, or you have uh, movies. Okay, and so they provide uh, data. Most of it's for free, and um, and and then it'll it'll come back with uh, you know you can you can ask it for instance. You can ask it um, like for instance a, a title Batman Batman, right? And you want it in JSON format, and you can search, and it comes back with a uh, with a JSON object. Uh, oh, I don't have an API. Ugh. Do I need an API really? Change log. Yeah, I threw. I think I threw away my API. I have to look it up. <laughs> I paid for this. I paid for this API. Uh, anyway, it comes back with a JSON, right? That it might be an array of objects that each object represents a movie, right? So you'll have there Batman Begins, Batman Returns, uh, the Batman, right? Each object, right? And and so you want to be able to create a user interface around that, right? Where you can uh, you can search, right? You can search for objects or for data, and it comes back with uh, with data that you can then render in your in your uh, user interface. Uh, and but you're free to choose whatever domain, whatever topic you want. It could be food, it could be sports, right? It could be entertainment, events, right? Restaurants, any topic you want. And and there's tons of them out there. You know, you can use Yelp. Best Buy, Barnes and Noble, you know, Amazon, right? They all provide, a, uh, you know, free APIs where you can retrieve data, right? So that's a requirement of being able to interact with some third-party API of your choice. And I will demonstrate this uh, when I, I guess, I get back my API. Okay. <laughs> my API. Okay. Now I am suggesting you start as soon as possible because uh, you might need to apply for these API keys. Uh, and that might take, I don't know, it could be the same day, it could be the next day. And, and then you have to learn how the API works, right? You, you have to read through your documentation of what you need to pass in as parameters. And you need to make sure that whatever API you choose uh, is, uh, is going to work for the requirements in the project, okay? So I would get started as soon as possible. Hi, Professor. Yes. Yeah, uh, can I ask you a quick question? Can I share my screen? Of course, please. Yeah. So uh, I have a question about homework six. So um, so this is my pra practice page. And when I go back to my build part, so there are always like, assignment five yeah that's because you included it yes. in the index yes correct HTML. and that's fine oh okay that's fine but but here 
say you, you see the uh the the, the router the link like yeah. basics so in this page we can't get set get right it correct yeah to our previous yeah, yeah 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 it only works when you land there the first time and then and then yeah. the router takes over yeah correct. right and it's intercepting all all navigation yeah, yeah. i know yeah that's fine okay that's fine. okay thank you so much sure okay oh another quick question is about our project so um so in our project, we need to uh, like implement a class and uh, a draw a UML diagram, right? Something like that. Uh, I believe the uh, first uh, uh, deliverable is for to have a design of your pro of the of what it is that you're building. And uh, we'll, we'll go over fun. all those, okay. all those, uh, we'll go over all those deliverables when we come back from the, from the exam. Okay, cool. So yeah. you, you suggest us to start as soon as possible, right? I would focus uh, on the wireframes of, or Wire even, frame. or even some static HTML or some static components yes, of yes. what the navigation might look like. You already know how to do that. Yes, yes. You, I think you know enough HTML, enough routing, Mm -hmm. enough uh a component yeah. that you could you could create right now a static version of your application yeah yeah right and then yeah. and then we'll learn as we go on how to make it dynamic you know yeah. go fetch data talk to the database retrieve data from third party and then render it dynamically but that's that's coming yeah. but you could already you know create a static version like we're creating a static version of of twitter right Yes. And and then we'll eventually make it dynamic as we go. Yes. Cool. That makes sense. Thank you okay. so much, Professor. Sure. Good night. Good night. Hi, Professor. Yes. Uh, can I share my screen to ask some question? Yes, right? Go ahead. Okay. So this is my exam uh, assignment. This and it's good uh, the picture looks good for the build part but when i click home it's some broken broken images here uh yep yeah. so is your uh i try to so uh i put my images in the public folder okay and i try to moved images folders around maybe inside the src but it's not looks good when i right, can i see can you okay me control uh twitter blah 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 okay do i have control sure okay can i uh can i stop this Yeah, let's stop. Uh, um, let's see, let's see default here. Okay, it's, it's, so it's this, it's this one, right? Yeah. Okay, and this is in local host. Okay, and build. And when you go to home, it breaks, yeah. right? Yeah. It also breaks when I uh, re-click the explore. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this build. Explore, oh, interesting. The dot dot images starship. Yeah. Dot dot images. 
And where are these? Uh, so this is A6? Uh, yes, I put my, so for, for the build part, I put the images in the public folder. It looks good. But what? for the challenge part, I'm not sure why is that. Uh, what do you mean? So for the build part, I put my images folders in the public folder. It uh, the images renders good. Yeah, but I don't understand. What do you mean? Why is this explorer mapped to a different location? So I went when I do so, the ex challenge part. Yeah. So you have a six build, right? Yes. And where's that mapped? Can I see that? Uh, Bill, where, what, what's what's this here? Uh, uh, Let me see. It's in uh, SRC slash components, A6 build. Okay. Yes. A6 build. Yeah. It's build, right? Yes. So it's, uh, and so it's this one? Um, yes. And then you have uh, explore, navigation. So then navigation. So when you do explore. Yeah. <laughs> it's will be good, yeah. Okay, there it is, right? Yes, so where can I put my images folder? Wait a minute, uh, let me see something. Now, if I go back, oops. Ah, yeah. Now I'm here. Yeah. Okay, now, okay, it works there. Yes. And it works in Explore. See that? Yes. Uh, so, what you need to do is that all these images, instead, all these uh, references, right, should not be, um, should not be, um, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, relative, they should be, they should be, um, yeah, they should be like this, right? So do I need to change all the the source. The yeah. So yeah. So that they the, so that they are absolute instead of uh, relative. Okay. Right? So so because image images is really at the root of your of the app. See, public is a root, and yeah. then images is off of the root. See okay. that? Yes. Uh, but if you start moving these around and put them in, in, in you know under a six under blah blah blah, right? Then then it'll be relative to the path of your of your navigation. And so it won't know how to calculate the relative position. Right. So it's better to use absolute positions instead. Okay. So otherwise maybe the build part will be will broke. Yes. Uh, this. No, no, no. It, now it works for both because it's always the same in the same location. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. And All right. that's Sure. Sure. Thank you. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. 
Uh, Manushi, you have a quick question? Professor, hi. I want to give the quiz three. So can I give that now? Uh, sure. Uh, are you a undergrad or grad? Graduate. And you're Manushi, what's your last name? I only have one name. Uh, I can't find it. Find you as Manushi. You have another name? No, it it should be dot Manushi. Right, but you have a last name. I don't have a last name, so they would have put. Uh, yeah, my last name is Manushi, so my oh, first name okay. is dot. <laughs> All right, it's unlocked. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. All right. Who else? Um, I have a quick question. So for link two, when we link something to um like a specific URL, that URL that linking to it must have been created previously already, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, uh, Shubangi or Shinyi? Liana, you have a question? Hey, no. Professor. Yes. Uh, would you post the the recording tonight or? No, I'll I'll do it tonight. It's still recording as we as we speak. Okay. Yeah. Diana, Piyal, Yuting, Aushi, Anand, you have a question? Hi, Professor. Um, I was wondering if I could talk to you about quiz three. I know someone's taking it right now, so I don't know if like we could join like a breakout room to talk about it or something like that. I don't know. Um, um or if I I can join or, it on Thursday too, if that would work better. Yeah. Uh, why don't you pick me like at noon tomorrow? We could chat. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Um. Well, I want to link this to something, but like, um, the issue I have is that well, following the um assignment itself it hasn't been created, but I'll just make sure that the syntax itself will be correct if I do do that. All right. You want to show something? So yeah, um, yeah. So yeah. So that that slash. Okay, a six. So it should be. I think it was should be a six slash home. Slash home. Uh, I don't remember. Whatever the assignment says. Oh, oh, because I'm just like guessing what the name would be. I'm not really sure because I'm just like. Yeah, no, the assignment tells you exactly what to use. So don't don't try to guess them. Oh, no, oh I'm just like, I'm just like trying to explain like the format because I haven't gotten that far into the assignment yet. Yeah, no, the, the format, uh, I think I say, you know, slash A6, slash home, you know, slash explore, slash uh, notifications, slash messages, slash bookmarks and so on and so forth. Oh, Twitter home. Oh, Twitter. Yeah, sorry. Yep. Okay, so would this be saved in its own file or would this? Oh, no, that's that's uh, it tells you right. That's in the uh, uh, it looks like it's in build.js or. Okay, gotcha. Same. Yeah, follow, follow the instructions. You know, in order. Otherwise, it won't work. Yeah, I'll just I'll just leave this to when I get there. I guess. Thank you. Sure. Uh, hey, Professor. Hey, uh, Shi, what's up? Uh, are we having the assignment seven and nine for the following week? Because I, I can see on the canvas or, or the assignment six will be the last assignment. 
Uh, I haven't made available all the other ones yet. Okay, so we still have assignment seven, eight, nine, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I don't want people getting ahead and then I have to change something and then they'll work on something that I'm change. <laughs> sure. So we will be doing uh, the following assignments and at the same time during our project, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you'll be practicing other skills such as talking to the server, uh, a, a, talking to the database, maintaining state, restful services, things like that. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Sure. Hi, I have a question on uh, assignment six. Sure, what's up? I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, for the home page, I'm trying mm -hmm. to get this link to work here. Um, but I'm not sure why it's not working. Uh, it would be here. Um, okay, let me see. Let's take a look at it. Let me see. Can we control? Okay. Uh, can we text decoration none? Class, blah, 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 href, yada, yada, yada. Oops. Ah. Uh, title, the title, is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. What the heck is that? This is the browser? Yeah, that's it. Oh, it's escaping it. Um, where where are you rendering this? Um, we're in the uh, oh the post item. Okay, and so where you have the title. Uh, at the, oh, sorry. So where's the title? Uh, at the bottom, right there. Right title. here. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, how is that you do it? Um, there it is. <laughs> Must be in the form of. Oh. What do you say? Blah, 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 blah. Must be in the form, blah, 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 blah. Uh, 
Really? Okay. I remember the syntax. Oh. Uh, so usually this is a dangerous operation mm -hmm. because people can inject dangerous stuff into these uh, into this into that content in the okay. database. Uh, so they want to make sure you know what you're doing. And blah, 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 blah. That's what I did. Dangerous reacts for plans for energy in the browser, blah, 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 in general. From a code is risky because blah, 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 blah. So you can say Chanel directly from React, but you have to type out <laughs> and pass an object with, that's what I did, right? Isn't, isn't that what I did? Yeah. Huh. Did that save maybe? Or save, save all. Which one is it? Is it this one? Must mm -hmm. be in the form. Yeah, he did. Props not dangerous. That must be. Um, must be in the form. What don't you like? Uh, Dev uh, equal post that title. Close that title. Hmm. Interesting. Is it a function? Okay, it's there. It is. Oh, it wants a function. Really? Ew. Interesting. Okay. All right. Yeah, it, it wants a function. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you can figure that out on how to put it inside of a function. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, Manusha, you're done? I'm still giving, Professor. I'm sorry? I'm still giving. OK. Do you have any questions? Uh, no. 
Uh, professor, for question number two, I just wanted to check like uh, what is A and B in this like different uh, like A dot Alice dot salary. Uh, question, which one? Second. Okay, what do you need? Uh, like for option one, like for me, it's showing a dot Alice dot salary. So a is just the object which is invoked uh, for the invoking this. And say again. I mean. Oh a. I, oh no, that's just option a, option b, option c. Okay, like because it was written a dot Alice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry for the dot. Yeah. No, it just says that there's option a, option b, c, d, e. Okay, so it just like Alice dot salary plus equal to thousand. That is the yes. Okay. okay. Oh wow, this was long. Uh, professor, I've gone through all the questions. I think I don't have any other doubt except this one. I can continue giving if it's fine. Okay, sure. Thanks a lot. All right. Bye bye. Good luck. Bye. -bye. Good night. Good night.